Standards are nice. Sure, they can lead to massive commercial monopolies over an industry, but at the same time, they ensure that wherever they're used, interoperability wins. The alternative is to have two or more competing standards that don't work with each other, making them more expensive to develop and get adopted, raising the potential for all of that development money to go to waste, and posing the risk to consumers that the new technologies they buy will be out of date if they choose the wrong side. One of the most recent stories of a largely preventable standards clash is the war over the two high-definition optical formats, Blu-ray and HD DVD. As the 90s were coming to a close, HD TVs were beginning to become a viable market. Prices were going down, TVs were getting larger, but there wasn't very much content to watch in HD. Movies were either on VHS, analog stored 480p, or DVDs, digitally stored 480p, both standard definition. But except for a few unpopular tape-based formats, nothing was available to make full use of the sharper picture that HD TVs offered. The first step to the solution arrived when a man named Shuji Nakamura developed a commercially practical blue laser diode. With optical media like CDs and DVDs, wavelength of the laser being used determines the amount of data that can be stored. The thinner the wavelength, the more data can be compressed into the same space. That's why DVDs, with a 650 nanometer wavelength, can hold more data than CDs, with a 780 nanometer wavelength. So, to increase the storage on a disc more, the wavelength had to be pushed even shorter, from red light to blue. With the blue laser diode ready to be used in optical media, tech companies got to work on creating a format to put HD content on a disc. Sony and Philips started the Ultra Density Optical and DVR Blue projects. But their early prototypes for what they called Blu-ray discs weren't appealing to the DVD Forum, a group of companies who managed the DVD's format standardization, since they needed a plastic caddy to hold the disc that would drive up the manufacturing costs. The DVD Forum decided to make its own blue laser format, which it eventually adopted from Toshiba and NEC. It was originally called Advanced Optical Storage, but quickly got renamed to HD DVD. Conflicting formats are bad for everyone, and the companies behind both optical discs knew that. DVDs were able to avoid that problem by having all companies agree on one standard, so in attempts to prevent the war, both the DVD Forum and the Blu-ray Association attempted to compromise on one format in early 2005. Some of the main points of issue were the physical design of the disc and the software platform for interactive content, either BDJ for Blu-rays or HDI for HD DVDs. Bill Gates himself argued that Blu-rays wouldn't work as smoothly on personal computers, and shortly afterward, Microsoft and Intel both announced their support for HD DVD. HP tried to form a compromise by suggesting running HDI on the Blu-ray disc format and threatened to support HD DVD otherwise. The Blu-ray Association disregarded the suggestion, and negotiations came to a close. It was time for the formats to go to war, and let consumers decide what disc would be the future of home video. Before the release of both technologies, the war was still anyone's game. Each format had three of the big six movie producers. Over time though, Blu-ray features began to attract some companies, like Warner Bros. and Paramount, but Paramount soon stepped back to exclusive support of HD DVD. The lack of exclusive support for HD DVD by movie studios prompted retailers to back away from the format. Both Blockbuster, yeah, they were still a thing back then, and Target began to focus primarily on Blu-ray. Warner Brothers soon followed suit the next year, after originally publishing to both formats. With this dropping support for HD DVD, the end was becoming apparent to Toshiba. In a last-stitch effort to push the format, they drastically reduced the price of their HD DVD player to almost half what it was originally being sold for. The move tanked, and not long after, Best Buy and Walmart, the largest vendor of DVDs, both announced they soon would be dropping support for HD DVD. Within four days, Toshiba 2 announced they would stop selling, developing, and manufacturing HD DVD, essentially bringing an end to the war. The remaining companies after Toshiba jump ship didn't take long to do the same. Microsoft stopped producing their HD DVD add-on for the Xbox 360, and the last two of the big six studios, Universal and Paramount, joined the Blu-ray camp. In an attempt to help clean up the remaining HD DVDs floating around and ease consumers in their transition to the winning format, Warner Brothers exchanged HD DVD collections with their Blu-ray counterparts, at a greatly reduced cost compared to simply rebuying the movies. How did Blu-ray win if both formats had relatively even support towards the beginning of the war? It mostly comes down to the fact that, in practice, the companies on both sides were far from even in their capabilities to sway the market. Blu-ray had more studios on the fence than opposed, because of the features it offered, like an improved system for DRM. 
The companies behind Blu-ray also contributed significantly to promoting the format, especially Disney, who published display videos to be used as in-store demonstrations. Probably the biggest determining factor, though, was Sony's decision to include a Blu-ray drive in their PS3. At the time, it was a daring move, since it jacked up the price of the console significantly compared to its predecessors in competing consoles, and lost Sony about two to three hundred dollars per console. In the end, though, it proved to be the right choice, since by the time Toshiba had given up on HD DVD, 10.5 million PS3s had been sold worldwide, compared to one million HD DVD players. From Blu-ray's successful launch, the format has become more widely adopted, though not nearly as quickly as had been seen with DVDs. The amount of data able to be stored on the discs has been consistently improved, and new features like support for 4K video, narrower wavelength lasers for potentially 1TB discs, larger color spaces, and even discs that are able to be played in both normal DVD players and Blu-ray players have been developed. The future for Blu-ray looks bright, though HD DVD, a project that lost Toshiba about $986 million, is largely forgotten.